Hello, welcome back to the podcast and thank you for listening. Thank you for everybody, first of all, who joins, who cares, who listens. I see you and I appreciate you. And today, because I see you and appreciate you, we're going to talk about how to be rich and successful and sexy. How to be that rich, sexy lady that 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 kind of that emulates kind of all of the juicy, glamorous, sexy vibes. Basically, it's how to attract money and how to be that exact woman that you want to be. There is four steps. I've written them down to have my own mind, first of all, but also to communicate it to you. Step number one is I'm going to frame them first and then we'll go through them. Money comes to an idea. Number two, you need to have a vivid image of your life. Number three, you need to do now what you can do now complex idea we'll get there and then number four is my favorite it's the balancing of masculine and feminine energy in order to attract money and all of that good stuff to you yes guys let us get into it if you are watching this on youtube comment what your favorite point is comment in general what you want from life and what you feel about these points if you are listening to this on a podcast platform leave me a review ask a question let's interact guys this is episode number 54 that means i have done a year of this podcast and i am kind of proud i'm sure you're proud of me thank you for everybody who's got it in the charts and all that good stuff so we want to be that rich and sexy bitch okay that's what we want to be money rule number one comes to an idea or a chasm that exists okay It's a very esoteric, very in the head idea, but I have been on this earth for a certain amount of time. Let's say I'm in my mid thirties, okay? For reference for you. When I was in my twenties, I was different to what I am now, but I wasn't like less able or less anything. But I've only started to make money from the things that I do, the same things in my thirties. Why? Because I had a reason for it. There was an emotional reason we need to attach the idea of making money or idea of creating a business or an idea of something that we really want to manifest into this world we need to attach it to an idea okay so if you just walk around saying i want to make a hundred thousand dollars that's fantastic if you go around saying i want to make half a million dollars that's fantastic but what is it attached to and a lot of times if you're a woman watching this or listening to this i suppose most of you are we need an emotional reason to attach it to now Everyone has different emotional reasons. Your emotional reason, for example, could be that you want to prove something to yourself or your teacher when you were at school who said you were good for nothing. Me, I'm one of those people who attaches value to what I bring into other people's lives. If I try to twist myself and make myself be one of those people who's motivated by my own benefits, I couldn't do it. There is something that happened in my upbringing or somewhere along the way where I started to be motivated by the reaction and fulfillment of others. Maybe it's an empath trait. I don't know. I'm not going to analyze it because it's not important. You need to understand what motivates you, okay? So when I was in my 20s and I was creating content and I was doing this, that and the other, I was making some money. I was modeling. I was acting. I was, that was my job. It was fine, but it wasn't a business that I was proud of. It's become a business that I'm proud of when, ladies and gentlemen, anyone, anyone in the back, anyone, anyone? Okay, yep, you? Yep, that's right, when I had kids. Why? Not in the first moment I had Leo, my son who's three, but maybe six months after, I started to formulate it into a business idea. Why? Because my husband is a type who's always been a provider. He's always wanted to do that. It's not a problem for him. But there came a time where it was Christmas or something like that. I think the first Christmas after Leo was born, we were buying a house, we were renovating, we were doing other things. And he was like, let's just have a low key Christmas. Actually, it was when Leo was one or something like that, where he could understand Christmas. My husband said, let's have a low key Christmas because we're spending so much money on all this stuff, which I 100% idea with. He leads in that way in our family and I 100% understand it's not a problem. But a thought in me was like, oh my God, I want to provide my son with the Christmas I might have not had when I was young. I want to provide my son with this, that, and the other. And I also want to provide my son with a Christmas. My mum was always very good at creating special times for me in my life. And despite not having much money when she was raising me as a single parent, she always made magic for me. And I was like, I completely understand my husband not wanting to, you know, go all out for Christmas, which is totally fine. 
but I want to be able to influence this. I want to give this to my child as his mother. Let me tell you, I wrote a business plan so fast. You would have called me Speedy Gonzalez, okay? And I created content, videos, a plan strategy. I started to suddenly share ideas that were moving something and were pivotal. Before that moment, for some reason, my brain wasn't attaching it to anything that was important. I was doing fashion content, right? And suddenly, when I realized, no, I want to make my son happy, and I want afterwards, <clears throat> I attach it to the idea of not only making my son happy, but also to the idea of creating something that both my son and daughter will be proud of. My business building strategy went into the stratosphere when I found out I was pregnant with a daughter. Let me tell you, the day I found out I was pregnant with a daughter, I wrote a whole book and I'm publishing it in May. Pre-order it, by the way, in the description box below. It's called The New Rules and it is the new rules of how you're going to live your life, okay? From the moment I was pregnant with her to now, I wrote a whole book. Why? Because she's female. I attached some kind of idea to that, to the fact that I feel that I want to motivate her of how she's going to appear in this world and how she's going to feel and that I want her to be proud of me. I didn't attach that idea to my son. I just attached the fact that I want him to have a fabulous Christmas, okay? I want to pass her on a business if she so chooses to run my business or join me. I wanted to for her to be proud of me as a woman and show her how to model myself in life. I expect my husband will show my son how to model himself in life. Anyway, my why is very much others based it's my children based the reason i made money and the chasm i made for for that money is in order to create a christmas for my son in order to make my daughter happy i want money in order to take them on holidays when i visualize that that's what motivates me before i had them i visualized money in a way like oh it would be nice to make like half a million dollars it would be nice to make a hundred thousand dollars it would be nice to make sixty thousand but also you need to understand there might be blocks in you I sometimes associated money when I look back now, when I think about it now, with perhaps hyper independence, which is a block that I've gotten rid of. Hyper independence meant for me that I would not be reliant on other people, therefore I'd be lonely. What is that about? Hyper independence meant for me that I would somehow, you know, be always working, be by myself. But now I've attached the idea to making money and a business with my children's happiness and my family's happiness. I want to take my family out to fabulous restaurants while my husband builds our life, okay? You need to understand what your emotional reason is, the chasm that you want to fulfill for you it might just be being fabulous. The visualization for you might be you're just this fabulous creature and you own this business and you're speaking in forums. There is no judgment here, it's all in your head. You need to understand what motivates you. Money is an energy which fits into the place where it is missing. If you just talk about money in terms of like numbers, nothing's going to happen. You need to energetically attach what you want that money for, for it to move. Okay? And you need to visualize that reality for yourself. It needs to be like a tape that plays in your head. Because suddenly my brain started to understand how to formulate a business plan, how to find the right stuff, how to talk about things that resonate with people. I'd done a whole life coaching diploma and was taking clients and doing all these things years before I even started to talk about this on TikTok. Why did my brain not think, hmm, people need this kind of help? People want to talk about masculine, feminine energy. No, I was doing fashion blogging content because you see, I didn't attach an idea to it that was valuable. For me, it all starts with skincare. That's why I want to thank OneSkin for supporting this podcast. OneSkin's products are powered by their scientifically proven peptide called OS1. This peptide reduces the accumulation of damaged aging cells on your face and body. The cells that make your skin less resilient and more prone to lines and wrinkles. And instead of making these issues, one skin addresses them at the cellular level, boosting your skin's natural barrier to lock in the moisture and help protect against the elements. They have their full line of face and body products, including OS1 Shield and SPF. And SPF is so important, guys. It's crucial to your skincare game. So for a limited time only, our listeners will get an exclusive 15% off One Skin products using the code being her when you check out at oneskin.co. No matter the reason, keep your skin looking healthy and feeling healthy with One Skin. They do not treat the outer 
symptom, they treat the root cause. Most skincare brands which are available just treat the symptom, not the cause. That's why I personally love this brand. They leverage their in-house cutting edge R&D platform, which they use to measure the efficiency of skincare. One Skin is the world's first skin longevity company. By focusing on the cellular aspects of aging, One Skin keeps your skin looking and acting younger for longer. Get started today with 15% off using the code BEINGHER at oneskin.co. That's 15% off oneskin.co with code BEINGHER. After you purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. So please support this show and tell them that I sent you. Help your skin look younger and healthier for longer with one skin. Number two is you need to write it down or visualize exactly what it is you want it for. This attitude of this sexy, rich, fabulous woman that you want to be, it needs to be detailed. It needs to, you need to understand what kind of woman she is. You need to understand what she does on an everyday basis. You need to really know who she is and the idea of real sexiness in a woman is not necessarily how you look sure it might be to men about how you look but we're talking about from an energetic point of view if you move through this world i have seen really good looking people who after looking at them for five minutes you are not magnetically attracted to them sexually as in with some finesse that they have you're not magnetized to them you can see their objectively good looking like their features you know have some kind of ratio which works out but they are not they don't possess that kind of magnetism and that magnetism i will tell you the secret it's it's your reaction and your emotions and your self-presentation in a moment it's how you react to the ebbs and flows of the world you need to understand how do you want to react to the world how is it that you're presenting yourself and how is it that you're representing yourself and you need to not waver from it you need to understand what this woman is like for example you know angelina jolie and mr and mrs smith she's got a certain character if you haven't seen it watch it or just imagine any sort of character in a movie they have a self-possessed energy that they move through life with the way they interact with the world the way they react to things you need to be a black cat in terms of how you react and what you do and how you gravitate energetically towards yourself. No matter who you are now, you need to act in that way that you want to be. You need to forget what you look like right now. I could tell you how to be a sexy woman and you could watch the video before this one or listen to the podcast before this one. Number 53 was all about how to make people think you're good looking when you're not. And that's all valuable, all the physical stuff. But true sex appeal and sexiness and magnetism is to do with how you react to the world, how your inner emotional state is. You need to have like a calm and a natural presence to you, how you react to your reality, because your reality is mirrored from your emotions. If you're always snapping at everything and you're always, oh, trying to control your husband, yelling at your kids, running around like a man chihuahua, okay, with a dynamite up its bum. That is not the woman that you want to be. That's not going to gravitate this like magnetism from you. When you feel you're losing control, you need to lean back and lean back into the idea of the woman you want to be. Who is she? You've written her down. You need to have it down to details, down to minor things. And you need to pretend, which is number three, that you are her in this moment. I don't care what you look like, Jilly. I don't care what you look like, Amanda. I don't care how you present, what you have, what you don't have. You need to act in this moment like that rich, sexy woman that you want to be today in this moment. You're like, Margarita, how? How can I act rich if I don't have any money? How can I act sexy if I'm not? If I'm just like feeling so shit about myself? The point is, through actions of the person, of the avatar that you want to be, you are going to move towards being the person that you want to be. You see, you're going to take actions by understanding who it is, the goal, the goal of the woman, of the avatar that you have chosen. You're going to take those actions because let's set an example using that Mr. and Mrs. Smith analogy with Angelina Jolie. Remember how she dresses? It's very smart. It's very lady of the manor. It's very, you know, up there. If right now, as Margarita, who's sitting here in a black t-shirt and shorts in Australia, is hot. We're hot here in Australia, so that's what I'm wearing. If I try and stop myself and I say, oh, but yeah, but where am I going to wear that? How am I going to wear that? 
I don't want to wear a blouse today. It, does, it doesn't suit me. I, I'm not at the weight I want to be. I, I, I don't have the look. I, I don't have my hair right. I don't have... Blah, 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 blah. No. You need to now be acting like that avatar that you want to be. You need to now start dressing that way. Everything else will fall into place. Okay? Me, I want to be in my shorts and t-shirt. I'm in my black t-shirt, black shirt, black whatever era. Because right now, I have decision fatigue, my friends. Right now, all I want to know is how I want to move through life, how I want to create this book, how I want to create this podcast. I don't want to choose what t-shirt I'm wearing. So right now, I'm in my black t-shirt era, okay? You need to impart the routine of the woman that you want to be today. That will lead you to a more fulfilling, sexy, magnificent, satisfying life and that will gravitate that money to you you're going to start eating differently you're going to start moving differently you're going to start being different you do not get what you want you get what you're ready for so if you're sitting around complaining that you don't have the life that you want and people don't react to you this way and men don't want you like that and you don't have the job you want are you acting like the woman who would have those things are you acting like the woman who would have no okay there's your answer there is your answer. You need to put those two closer together. Your reality and who you want to be. And the last one, my favorite. Number it is hard to find both a sexy bra and a comfortable bra, especially us girls. We go from size to size. That is why Third Love, who is sponsoring this podcast, is an incredible solution. I have been postpartum twice. I have been breastfeeding. I have had babies. I've had before that. I've gone, I'm not joking, from a B cup to a E, to a double D, to a B, to a C throughout my life. That is why you need to get measured and fitted properly. Third Love has anywhere from double A cups to H cups. You enter their virtual fitting room and they'll help you find your perfect size. They even invented half cup sizes, which is really important because I'm always hovering halfway somewhere. You know what I mean? Basically, they're a really good solution. I love their colors. They have incredible tones. They've got t-shirt bras. And right now I'm loving an underwire free bra because of the breastfeeding situation. I don't want anything pressing on me any more added stress that I need. I don't want that in my life. So get your problems solved. Do you get it? Problems, but problems. Yeah, that's their little slogan, which I love. Basically, go to thirdlove.com and get $15 off your order with the code podcast15. It's time to get your problems solved. Visit thirdlove.com and get $15 off your order with the code podcast15. Have fun shopping, my loves. Let me know what you get. Number four, and the last point I want to say is you need to balance your feminine and masculine energy. Feminine energy within a body, we all have both energies why I talk a lot about those energies is because we both have that yin and yang, dark and light, wisdom and intelligence. Wisdom is feminine, intelligence is masculine. Masculine is going forward, feminine is receiving. You understand, right? So feminine in the idea, in the realm of becoming the woman you want to be, being sexy, being alluring and creating the business you want and making money. Feminine is I want and I desire. The feminine energy is to say, I want this in my life. I want that in my life. I want to have this dream. I want to have this much money. I want to be sitting on a yacht and I don't want to be sitting on a yacht because that makes me sick. It makes me sick to be on a yacht. So that's not what I want. But if you want to be on a yacht, you do you girl. I want to buy this farmhouse. I want to do this. I want to do that. That's the feminine manifestation energy. You're saying it. You're saying it now. If you are a couple, me and a man, and I'm saying my, what I want, I want this, I want that. And I'm genuinely excited about it and I'm manifesting it. It's the man's role to make it happen because the man is I can or I will. When yours is I desire and I want, his is I can and I will get that for you. So within a relationship that works that way, if you can inspire him and have genuine desire from your feminine and create this incredible life that he's going to strive for, his role is the I can and I will. But as much as the feminine is the idea and the masculine is how do I get there, you have those energies inside yourself. With my husband, when I interact with him or with male partners, I suggest you interact from your feminine to their masculine and that creates a really nice, juicy relationship because he is chasing, you are um, being chased, you are receiving, he is giving and it creates a really nice dynamic because the woman thrives in the modality of lack of stress. She doesn't want stress in her life. So when the man is chasing and when the man is going after her, 
she feels calm in her nervous system and she blooms as a woman if you are chasing him he becomes uncomfortable because what he wants is to pursue and to chase no matter how much men say they don't want to they want to it makes them interested it makes them not want to philander and do all this other stuff because they are mentally engaged men are comfortable when they're mentally engaged with a woman i'm gonna drink this diet coke i don't want to show you that side of myself we shouldn't be drinking diet drinks or this drinks like that in general don't do that that's a no no that's a boo boo and everyone who's listening to this yeah i just um fessed up so there you go we need to quit we need to quit sodas absolutely absolutely i started them when i got pregnant because um i had hyperemesis so i couldn't eat or drink and that's the only thing i could drink so there you go anyway moving back you need to cultivate the feminine and the masculine within yourself when you're creating money and abundance as a woman through business. Why? Unless, of course, this is the other way to do it. Unless you are in a marriage and you are not working and you're looking after children, the way to do it is to inspire your husband to create that money, okay? So again, it's the feminine inspiring the masculine and he does the doing of how to do it. If you're by yourself or if you want to work and that's your choice, then you need to have that inside yourself. You need to have both. You can't just sit there dreaming with the feminine. Oh, I want this. I want that in my business. I want this, that, the other one. You then need to have your masculine energy action it. Like I told you about my life, I had ideas of what I want to do. I had these ideas of talking to women and I, I had ideas of running forums or creating my master classes. If you haven't seen them, check them out. It's uh, 20 feminine energy principles really good one proud of that one and polarity principles about how to get that spark back in a relationship in a long-term relationship and have him react to you in the way that you want to that one has some wisdom in it so check those out but when i created those it was through my masculine energy because i was how strategy finding someone who could put them onto a platform where people could purchase it where people could react to it where people where it would be easily accessible doing all those things was not from my feminine energy it was from my masculine energy because i did the how feminine energy is you know if you're having a meal it's I want to eat with a beautiful plate. I want to have a beautiful view when I eat. I want to really indulge myself. The masculine is how are we going to eat? Where are we going to buy it? What is the nutritional factors of this meal? Because what I want to do is fuel my body accordingly. You need to, if you want to succeed in business and create that kind of abundant lifestyle, create a plan with your masculine energy. Be the man within yourself, inspired by your feminine energy. If you want your husband to do it for you, then you need to inspire his masculine. You need to have an idea and a vision that is so clear, like we just discussed prior, of what you want and what your life entails. And you need to know how to motivate either the masculine, which is your husband, or the masculine inside yourself to do it. I motivated both my husband to create the life we want, but then I decided to motivate the masculine within myself to go and create my masterclasses, to go and create this podcast, to research how to even get it up there on onto the interwebs, okay? So the masculine energy makes the plan. Essentially, to have that abundance, you need to either be a man for yourself, inside yourself energetically, or get a man to do it for you, okay? So again, from the top, from the top, make it drop. Number one, money comes to an idea. This is the feminine energy part. It needs to be so fundamentally concrete in your mind for, for the, the emotional reason for why you want to be rich and sexy. Number two, you need to describe your lifestyle in detail, in detail, in detail. You need to know exactly what you're striving to. That is the masculine concept of how. The what can I do now is the esoteric feminine part of like, what are we doing? Where are we? You know, what am I doing in the everyday to be that person I want to be? And the last part is balance your masculine with your feminine because that is the way to achieve your goals guys thank you for listening i appreciate you being here leave me in the comments what else you want to talk about because i'm here for it love you lots like jelly tots and i'll see you on the next one